probably just don't know it, and that's what music people do. Um, but for us, we're just here to talk about sound. And we think that sound is one of the most powerful and efficient ways to engage with audiences. Uh, I'm here with Dan, Hi. who is our lead creative director. And we want to share with you uh, just a little bit about how we think um, at Man Made Music. But the first thing is why sound? If we're talking about senses, um, sound goes directly to the limbic part of your brain. It literally bypasses the rational part of your brain. And the reason for that <laughs> is things like this. We had to be programmed for sound. Babies crying, that rustling in the bushes that told you whether lunch was served or you were about to be lunch. Sound <laughs> is your fastest sense, and it's for that reason. It was about survival. It literally completely uh, bypasses your neocortex and hits the emotion at the center of your brain. So as Seth Horowitz, who's a PhD of brain science said, in less than 50 milliseconds, still six times faster than the blink of an eye, you've already identified the sound and where it's coming from. In the time it takes you to blink, the sonic input is, goes directly through your auditory cortex to the parts of your brain that control memories and emotions, very specifically. And I think this is hard for us all to understand. We take it for granted. But um, the easiest way to see it is we're going to watch a video of Sarah Sherman, who was 28 when she heard for the first time. And you know, for us, uh, it's easy to take advantage of that. And that's not what we want to do. Oh. oh. Well, I was going to set that up, but. Uh, <laughs> Go for it. No, as, as Lauren was saying, so like, good. it's really, it's, with sound, there's a lot of emotion. And one of our challenges that we had recently was a client, Alzheimer's, Alzheimer's Association. And it'd be really easy with a client like this to start pandering to the emotions that are associated with Alzheimer's and, and the disease. But what we had the challenge is, how do we position, how do we, write, how do we write a score for that association that positions them as leaders with compassion? So leading with compassion. So we can't just, it'd be real easy just to go for just for tears, but how do we position them in a certain way? So this was just a short expert of the score that we wrote for the brand, positioning them as compassionate leaders, leading with compassion. Now, cool, so sound, one, one of the other things we strongly believe in is that sound can solve brand and human problems. So the next example we're gonna show is a little bit of both, both brand and human problems. Uh, next slide. So the AT&T, AT&T is one of our main, major clients that we work with, and most people associate going into an AT&T store with like how fast can I get in and get out to get my problem solved, whatever, whatever crappy issue I have to deal with. They were opening up a flagship store on Michigan Avenue where they really want it to be about discovery. And so that's not something you associate normally with going into an AT&T store. So we had the opportunity here in the rotunda of the, of the entrance to the, to the store to set up a sonic experience that would immediately exchange, uh, change people's perceptions of what they're gonna have. So we had the opportunity then to create like a quadraphonic surround sound. I'm just gonna describe it as a sonic Rube Goldberg machine and let you guys kind of figure out what that means. But basically it, it was a ambience that never changed, or it kept changing throughout, never repeated itself, kept changing throughout the course of the day. And people would walk in there and kind of <laughs> do that and it immediately changed their perception of what kind of store we're walking into. One that you want to engage with, one that you want to play with stuff. So let's just hear a little bit of that. So you don't get the quadraphonic thing here. <laughs> and with all our stuff, if it helps to look at the picture, if you're visual, do it. If it doesn't, close your eyes. So in our business, you're always learning. What was interesting about that is they actually, um, the store called us to say that kids were just stopping right there. <laughs> and not moving forward. It's one of those interesting, kids always go for discovery, right? And when you create moments of discovery for them, it's really interesting. Um, there's science behind all of this, um, whether it comes to the tempo of music in stores and how that moves traffic and increases sales, to the fact that we're all on a million screens right now. Our brains are actually working differently. And we need sound and other forms of symbolic communication to really get points across for brands. We're competing on a, with a lot of visuals at this point. So how do you engage the other senses? 
Um, you know, what it comes down to is the Harvard Business Review said that one of the most powerful branding tools that's generally overlooked or undervalued is sound. And cognitive studies show that relevant sound and music cues can truly influence people in ways that people, that marketers want. But for us, um, brands are great and marketing is great, but there's other places that we're uh, exploring and partnering. Um, what you're going to hear here is a little bit of an average emergency room. So what's interesting here is the brain can differentiate between six sounds at any given time. The average ICU has 40. It doesn't actually make sense scientifically. Um, and they're really struggling. Um, alarm fatigue is a rising cause of um, it issues death. And there's a lot of exhaustion. Nurses and doctors are tired. And honestly, hospitals are a place that you go to get better. And people are actually getting sicker. And sound is a big part of that. So we're partnering with companies like Memorial Sloan Kettering and hospitals to improve these experiences because we truly believe that music can not only alter, uh, change your mood, but it can alter the way that you perceive the world. So how do we use sound to make people healthier? Um, that leads into the next, sound can break or make the experience. So what does anybody think this is? Computer, the online helper, yeah. So what this actually was, was the call center hold experience for people who dialed into Easy Pass. They just didn't think about it. <laughs> they let the sound happen to them. It was essentially their internal exchange system transferring you. They just didn't think about it. And at the end of the day, you could be calling Easy Pass to say, I absolutely love your product. It makes my life so much easier. And they end up with reviews on their website like, I listened for 16 <laughs> seconds and wanted to kill my dog. <laughs> it's not good. It's not good for any brand experience. Um, at the, you can't let sound just happen. Sound is a part of our senses. It's going to be in any branded experience. And if you don't think about every moment of that experience, from call centers to your digital experiences to your in-store experiences, you're going to fall down in some place. So we had the so we had the we had the awesome opportunity to work with IMAX and talk about a, a brand that's all about experience, just pure experience there. And one of the things we're going to show you is we got the opportunity to rescore the countdown trailer that you see at the beginning of every IMAX film. And so that was an opportunity there where sound can make or break the experience. The first theatrical sonic experience you're going to get in an IMAX theater is going to be this countdown video. So we had the opportunity to really showcase the dynamic range, both the, the highest of the highs and the lowest of the lows in this, in this countdown trailer. We also had the opportunity to show the spatialization that happens in IMAX theaters. The new IMAX theaters have, what is it, 12, 12 channel, channels? 12 channel surround. So we got the opportunity to like really flex that system and create like an introduction to your pure experience of IMAX. So we're really proud of this. And the next thing they're going to do is hopefully redo the visuals. So they're right. not, you know. If you don't want to watch, it's cool. They're from yeah, the visuals feel a little. Uh, Mid 90s. Yeah. Yeah. But you can turn this one up a bit. I'm not sure it's. really see it in the theaters. It's, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, but the idea uh, there is that you've got, you've got that, that yeah. spectrum. So. Thank you. Um, and that was a 150 person orchestra and a 75 person choir. We believe in using real talent yep. and real musicians at every opportunity. Um, so with that, just a little bit, power sound triggers emotion. It can really solve brand and human problems. And it really can make or break an experience. That's it. That's it. Thank you.